So I'm a amateur 3D artist that specifically focuses on texturing game assets. And in these few short years, I've banged my head against the wall countless times trying to figure out how to texture these game assets proficiently. Maybe I just suck at researching, but there are so many little things that you need to know to contribute to your overall skill to be a solid 3D texture artist. And I've always just struggled to find good learning material that exposes me to these skills that I need to learn. So in order to save you the headache, I've compiled a list of things that I've learned over the years that will help you become a texturing badass in Blender. Now, if you've used Photoshop in the past, then you're probably familiar with how a layer-based system works. The thing is though, is that when you're using Blender, the same sort of concept, but the workflow is just a little bit different. In Blender, we don't layer textures on top of one another, but rather we sort of mix them together. The concept at its core is kind of the same thing, but it's just a different approach. So if you have a base color on your object and you wanna mix another texture over that, the way that you do that is through a mix color node. And in order to mix textures together, we need to use a mask. A mask is basically just a grayscale image where black equals zero and white equals one. And any value in between that is just a different shade of gray. A mask in its most basic form just allows information to pass through. The closer the value is to zero, or in this case black, more of our primary color is going to show through. The closer the value is to white or one, the more of our secondary texture is going to pass through that as well. To achieve this, simply plug the mask into the factor of the mixed color node, plug your primary texture into channel A and your secondary texture into channel B. You see this gray socket right here? The reason it's gray is because it only takes grayscale information, which also means that any image that is in grayscale can effectively be used as a mask. And this A and B channel, well, this can be anything. You can create complex textures and plug them into these channels to mix them together. If you wanna mix another texture on top of this, simply add a new mix color node, bring in or create a new mask, plug our original texture into either A or B channel and plug your new texture into the remaining slot. You can also use the mix shader node. This just allows us to mix two shaders together, which works in the same way as the mix color node. Plug two shaders into the green sockets and your mask into the gray socket and you're good to go. This is great for if you're creating two complex materials that both respectively have a lot of metallic roughness, normal information, stuff like that. My next point is edge masking. You can use an edge mask to simulate things like edge wear, dust buildup, outlines, scratch masks, and stuff. Now, creating an edge mask in Blender as opposed to Substance Painter is a pain in the ass. But being able to create an edge mask is so important to your workflow as it just unlocks the potential to be able to do so many different things. To create an edge mask, you first must be in Cycles Render Mode, copy this node group, change the vector map to dot product and copy these values on the map range node. Now, depending on the object that you're creating an edge mask for, you may need to turn your radius up or down on the bevel node. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't got a fucking clue what's going on here. All you need to know is that this node group is detecting the edges of our geometry and the radius on our bevel controls the distance it bleeds from the edges. Knowing this, we can modulate edge masks by either plugging in a noise texture node into the bevel or a grayscale image instead. Now, if you plug a texture into the bevel, it may screw things up. Simply add a math node, set it to divide and turn the value up until it starts working. Alternatively, you can set it to multiply and multiply it by something less than one and it pretty much does the same thing. Now, this is our mask, plain and simple. If you're on a computer struggling to run in cycles, you can bake the edge mask out, plug it back in and switch back to Eevee. To achieve this, just add in an image texture node, create a new image, plug your edge mask directly into the material output Head over to Render Properties, go down to Bake, simply switch the Bake Type to Emit, select the object, select the image texture and hit Bake. Save your image, plug it back in and switch back to Eevee. With this edge mask, we can repeat the same steps as before by using a Mix Color Node. Plug the mask into the factor and connect a different texture to the A and B channel. Now, there's many different ways that you can add a bit of variation to your textures. And while grunge maps are a key technique, I feel like they don't get spoken about enough. A grunge map effectively works as a mask. It's simply a grayscale image consisting of random noise, smudges, scratches, or dirt-like patterns. They contain a lot of irregularity. They contain a lot of irregular. 
I can't fucking say this word, mate. They contain a lot of irregularities. There we go. To help break up repetition in your textures and can add so much to your overall materials. Connect the grunge map into a bump, into a normal, mix it in with your base color, plug one into your roughness or metallic. You can even connect them to your edge mask to give yourself a bit more variety. You can find grunge maps around the internet for free or you can purchase packs of them for pretty cheap as well. If you're new to texturing and really wanna level up your game, use grunge maps. Now, these next two points kind of relate to one another, so I'm just going to mash them together. I've also been struggling to figure out how to try and explain these points to you, so I'm just going to show you by demonstration instead. Now, I'm texturing this Glock 19. You see on this gun right here that there is a bunch of numbers and letters stamped into it. Well, there's a super useful method that we can use in order to replicate that, and that's simply by using multiple UV maps. Bear with me here. I jump into Photoshop, make a few of these stamps by simply adding characters in. I give them a subtle outer glow. I'll show you why in a minute. And I export them as a PNG and bring them into Blender. Now, to get these stamps into the correct location on your gun, you want to plug it in and then move the UVs around into the correct spot. But here's the issue. If you've already UV unwrapped your model and then you start messing around with the UVs, you're going to start running into issues. If you're already using image textures on your model, then that is just going to throw them out of whack when you start moving things around. And when it comes time to start baking your models out into a game engine, any overlapping UVs are just going to produce strange results. Simple way around this is simply just adding a new UV map to your object. Select your model, go into object data, go down to UV dropdown and add a new UV map and rename it. Now in the shaded viewport, we can add a UV map node, select the UV map that we want to use and connect it to the stamps image texture. Now in the UV editor, select the UV map that you wanna mess with and move the islands around to fit the stamps on your model. Move the UVs that you're not using out of the way, select clip on your image texture and with the power of the bump node, we now have stamped metal. If you remember, I added an outer glow to the lettering whilst I was in Photoshop. The reason for this is because this gradient gives a bump effect, a smoother transition. If we didn't have the outer glow, it might come out a little too flat and it won't be noticeable. You can also use this method to mix in images with your textures also, as well as masks if you wanna place that in a specific area too. Now, masking seems to be sort of popping up in every point that I'm trying to make in this video, but that's kind of because it's really the bread and butter of texturing. Mask painting, as the name suggests, allows you to hand paint your masks on. You know, maybe you don't want a procedural edge mask. Maybe you want just a little bit more control over how you incorporate your edge wear into your objects. Well, luckily we can do this all in Blender. Make sure that you've UV unwrapped your model, bring in a mix color node or a mix shader, Connect your base texture to the A channel and your secondary texture to the B channel. Bring in an image texture, create a new image, set it to black, make sure that it's selected and head over to the texture painting tab. From here, you can use one of the preset brushes or import your own brushes and start painting in your mask. This technique is a great thing to learn, especially if you prefer working with your hands rather than procedurally. But with this technique, you have a lot more control over how you want to mask your textures. Even if you've created a procedural edge mask, you can still bake that out and start drawing in some of the finer details on that also. Now, this is just a great way to help make your materials pop. You know, if you just take a bit of time to add some finer details, it'll really add to the overall product. Anyway, this pretty much sums up the video. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and subscribe. If you want to tell me how bad of a 3D artist I am, leave a comment down in the comments. And if you want to be part of a passionate community that's filled with game devs and game dev artists, come join the Discord. We're all having a good time over there. This video's art of the week is dedicated to these gentlemen and general ladies. I don't know if we got any ladies over there. I think it's a sausage party, to be honest. And if there's any other tips that I may have left out, let me know in the comments. Um, bye.